this time of year it's cold at night. It's below freezing at night most nights, right? So I need the soil to warm up in the morning. I need, I need basically the sun to affect the soil and warm it up. So for sowing this time of year, Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm out here in my element in the last half hour light of the day sort of thing, trying to get at least one thing done after a long day's work. I came home, I had supper, I talked to the wife, talked to the kids, and now it's time to just have a little bit of time in the garden, moving the whole project forward, getting something done. And it's time to plant parsnips. And I'm gonna talk about why it's the time of year to plant parsnips as I walk through this uh, process of planting. And if you're not growing parsnips and you got some space, plant them. They're delicious. I like them more than carrots, in fact. I don't know why carrots are more popular than parsnips, but uh, I'll talk about more about that as we go along as well. So anyway, uh, this is one of my no-till beds. It, uh, you know, all I really had to do was, you can see over there, but uh, off to the left there is just a, an unused bed. Don't know what I'm using that for yet, but I took all the leaves and all the mulch I had on this over the winter and just tossed it over there. And with a few quick passes of the rake, I leveled this out. So it's all ready for planting. Uh, and the uh, process is pretty simple. Just gonna put some uh, rows lengthwise along the bed. Like this. Put them almost one trowel away from one another. Very low tap process. They're roughly uh, nine inches, I guess away from one another. I think that's for parsnips a good uh, planting distance. I mean there's in instructions on the package but uh, you know who follows those? <laughs> you follow, those are guidelines. <laughs> those are suggestions. <laughs> I find about basically one of my hand spans nine inches apart is a good spacing for parsnips and carrots. So what do I got here? Uh, that's a bit tight there but we'll work with it. The main thing is within the row that they're spaced out. Each plant should be about three inches from the next one. If you don't thin them out, you won't get size, in my experience anyway. Okay, so that's roughly equivalent rows. Gonna plant this variety here, Albion. This is a hybrid parsnip. I usually have some of my parsnips using open pollinated or even heirloom, um, and some using hybrids. I always plant Albion because they're just a big, fat, good tasting parsnip. Can't save the seeds of these, but I mean, you can if you want, but who knows what you'll get as a result. That's a whole nother conversation about saving seeds from hybrids. It's totally, at least where I live, you, you can save them if you want, but uh, probably won't work out so well. Anyway, I'll get these in the ground. Now, of course, I just start shooting a film and the military helicopter decides to fly over top. So that background noise is a helicopter. I live in Halifax. I live near Halifax, Nova Scotia, and there's a major naval base there and a naval presence here. Uh, I even got people on my street in the Navy. So uh, it's almost like a 50-50 chance of some sort of <laughs> something flying overhead while I'm filming. <laughs> it's almost guaranteed. Either someone's running a cha chainsaw or a lawnmower, <laughs> or there's a <laughs> some sort of cool looking uh, gray helicopter flying overhead. Um, anyway, why is this time to plant seeds? Because, uh, why is it time to plant parsnips, that is to say? Well, I'm going to talk more about this in another separate video. But, there's, I like to organize my planting times around the, uh, around the dandelion. I've done videos in the past talking about um, phenology. That is, you know, getting indications from other things in nature of what to plant. There it is up there. Yeah. I don't know what kind of helicopter that is. I'm not an expert on these things. Not a sea king anyway. But, um, yeah, see that. Sometimes they fly so close to the house, I think they're gonna land in my backyard. I don't know what they do other than just with pilots getting in their flight, flight hours for, for training, I suppose. Uh, I'd get some footage of it, but I'm sure you all know what a helicopter looks like. It looks just like a helicopter. <laughs> it looks exactly like what you'd expect. 
like something out of a movie. There's another way to sew here. I tend to over sew a little bit. Now these have a good germination rate, but anyway. Uh, so to get back on the topic of phenology, you take indications from nature. Things are happening in nature and based on that, you, you make a decision to plant. So this is the time of year, I take you around the garden when I'm done getting these seeds in, where the most cold tolerant things start to grow, start to germinate, that sort of thing. Uh, if you want to Google something, you look up online, minimum germination temperatures. And you'll see that some things, and you know, as, as a crude indication, some things require 5 Celsius to germinate, some things require 10 Celsius, Celsius to germinate, and some things require 15 Celsius to germinate. Okay, I mean, the actual temperatures are more precise than that, but as a germer rule of thumb, you, you, that's a good way to go with it. And uh, what I've noticed over the course of the spring is that uh, the dandelion has sort of three and maybe even four major stages of growth. There's the time of year when it, uh, when the greens first start to emerge out of the ground, which is now, and it's, it's usually just before I start hearing uh, the peepers, these tiny frogs that mate in early spring. So at that time of year, when you first see dandelion greens, you can plant parsnips, you can plant lettuce, you can plant spinach, you can plant arugula. And other things like, and those are basically the things I plant, so, but you look those plants up, look what family they're in, and, uh, you know, all things being equal, I'm sure there's exceptions, you can plant those things, and they're tough, okay, and I don't, I don't put these under cover, I don't, I know in a lot of my videos I plant things under, you know, plastic domes and stuff like that, but these I just leave them to their element. I mean, in the past I've actually sowed these in the fall and just left them out all winter, and they come up in the spring, right? So they're an incredibly tough plant. And I'm barely covering these with soil here. Okay, it's a great time of year to plant anything that can be planted this time of year because you get fairly regular rains, so you don't have to muck around watering, right? We're supposed to get sun the next couple days. We just had a big snowstorm the other day, so all the soil is nice and, nice and damp here. So, those things get planted at that stage. When the dandelion, when you see the yellow flower of the dandelion, that's another stage. That's basically another stage of soil temperature. So you can plant things that are, that are not as tough as spinach, lettuce, and arugula, and parsnips, but things that are pretty close. Like carrots, like broccoli, like, you know, because when you see the yellow flower of the dandelion, there's still a chance of frost, but the risk has gone down. The number of days to last frost are getting close. And your soil temperature is getting warmer to, during the day, let's say roughly 10 Celsius. Right, so things that like a little bit warmer temperatures. Uh, and you'll find, you, if you look up a list of that online, I'll put a link to one at the end of my, in the description box of this video. There's things that, you know, tend to germinate, and they're all sort of in a group, right? But a lot of those brassicas, a lot of things like that. You can also plant potatoes when you see the yellow dandelion flower, stuff like that. And a little bit later on in the season, the dandelion flower becomes white. Starts getting that fluff. There's a nail, that's nice. Um, yeah, it becomes white, starts getting that fluff, right? That's when it starts getting safe to plant your beans and your squash. I'm talking about planting out, right? Sowing seeds outside. Your fluff, uh, things like that. And if you're still concerned, maybe you, you wait. You wait until the fluff starts to fall off the dandelion. Plant everything out. There's some kind of dirt bike whipping around. Uh, you can also, you know, take a look at different sides of your house. When the, you know, when the yellow dandelion appears on the north side of your house as opposed to when it appears on the south side of your house. That sort of thing, right? Because depending on the side of the house, <laughs> right, it's, it's cooler than other sides, right? So on the side of my house, I guess 
technically what would that be? Uh, I guess that direction is south. So on the north side of my house, uh, the sun's in the south, right? That's the last area on my property because it has the most shade where you'll get a dandelion with a yellow flower. Uh, so maybe I plant some of my yellow dandelion flower plants, <laughs> right? Like potatoes, like broccoli, like beets and stuff like that. Some of them when uh, the uh, yellow dandelion flower appears on the south side of the house and I, I save some of them for later on just to be safe, okay? But anyway, those are the four stages. Dandelion green, dandelion yellow, dandelion white, dandelion white starts falling off the fluff, right? <laughs> um, you gotta think about the dandelions been, I mean, I, I meant to come out here and just talk about sowing parsnips. Um, I think what I just did was pretty self-explanatory here. I'm gonna put some water on this. Um, but those different stages, and I'm gonna do another purpose-built video talking about that as we go along. That's how I sort of roughly judge when the things are gonna go on the ground. Anyway, I'm getting off on a diatribe here. I don't wanna talk about that. Time to get some water here. I'm gonna get it out of my new pond, which is not finished, but still has water. Let's go have a look. Check that out. We had a snowstorm the other day, and I got water right here in the middle of my garden. Man, it's a bit dirty and all that sort of stuff, but who cares? There's no fish in it or anything like that yet. This, this pond is still uh, a work in progress. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But that's deep. Yeah, let's use this pickaxe as an indication. Right. Deepest spot right now. Let's say 16 inches, give or take. All right, now I put some water on these. The soil is good and damp, but you know, it's gonna be sunny tomorrow and sunny the next day. So we'll give them a good soak. I'm gonna use this whole gallon container. Just gradually. And you notice how the soil I put down is a different color than the soil of the bed. Now it's just some screen soil from another part of the garden where the soil is nice and dark. I like to use screen dark soil. It's not that I couldn't use the soil here for planting, it's just, you know, it helps me it helps me keep track of where, where I sowed the seeds. Uh, so some people are going to ask me, so I don't put any sort of cover over this or anything like that. But I noticed in a previous video, people said, are you going to uh, mulch the soil? Of course. Uh, but not this time of year. Uh, I've played around with it. And I go back and forth on these things. And I think it's six of one half a dozen of the other sort of thing. If I were to mulch the soil, basically you mulch the soil where the seeds aren't sown. So you have like mulch and then bare earth where the seeds are and then mulch and then bare earth. You basically have rows of mulch. If I do that, the soil doesn't get as warm because the mulch is shielding the soil from the sun. Okay, so on the bright side, the mulch keeps the soil from drying out. But on the negative side, it, it lowers the overall temperature of the soil. And I need the soil temperature to be, you know, this time of year it's cold at night. It's below freezing at night most nights, right? So I need the soil to warm up in the morning. I need, I need basically the sun to affect the soil and warm it up. So for sowing this time of year, it's different later on in the season when you get a lot of sun and a lot of heat and stuff like that. But for early in the season, I have found that taking the mulch off temporarily to get things germinated is all right. Um, unfortunately, that can lead to, you know, any soil has weed seeds in it. I'm sure there's a million weed seeds in here. So unfortunately, that does result in whatever weed seeds uh, exist in the soil germinating. Um, but it's relatively little work once you're, once the things you've planted are about six inches high, right? Then you go in and lay your mulch down and you just have to do a bit of a weeding exercise. Um, depending on what kind of weeds are going, sometimes you can just push the weeds over and put the mulch on top. And it's so successful in smothering out the plants from the light that it just kills them. You can also put strips of cardboard down or brown paper bag with a little bit of mulch on top of that to hold it in place or even rocks or sticks or rotten wood or whatever. I mean, I use all these different techniques in my garden. And if you haven't been watching all along, I'll be doing that as the season goes. So I'm gonna, I think 
I'm thinking of doing a lot more of these just like after work planting stuff in the ground videos because um, you know I'm doing it all the time and, and especially beginners they sort of need uh, to, to be walked through the process a lot <laughs> so, right so and there's a lot of little I mean it's all easy but there's a lot of little nuances to it that I don't think about in purpose-built videos but there are things I think about when I'm gardening so these uh, sort of free association, uh, you know, <laughs> random thoughts videos. Uh, <laughs> for some reason, they get, they get my brain going, and I have a lot of things to say, even though it it sort of does run all over the place. And I know people get annoyed about that sometimes, but sometimes it's good uh, just to get it all out there, and it all goes into your brain, and you think about it a little bit, and maybe that uh, helps you in some way uh, when you're trying to as you're trying to figure out how to make this work for you. Um, so uh, anyway, let's just go around the garden. Let me show you the few things that are actually growing right now while we still have a few minutes of light left. So here's the parsnip bed right over here. I got to move these, but anyway, these are Egyptian walking onions. They're growing, right? And there's, there's I have these in a number of places in the garden. They're all growing. This bed here is garlic. And they are starting to grow, just pushing up through. And look at that, mulched with grass clippings, which you wouldn't think garlic could find its way through. It always looks like it's such a tight weave. But garlic can find its way through grass clippings, uh, and, and grass, ironically, cannot. <laughs> so it's a great mulch. <laughs> Over here, I got French sorrel, a perennial beginning to grow. Another good indicator that the soil is warm enough for the toughest things to grow. Uh, over here, hard to see, but I got the beginning signs of life. I saw it the other day. Is it over here maybe? Yeah, over here. Beginning signs of life of this bloody dock. I don't know if you can see that. That's yeah, starting to grow. That's another Perennial, not unlike the Sorel. And over here, I got dandelion. Now this is a an actual cultivar of dandelion. It's called Italian Punto dandelion. So this is one you eat, um, but they are growing, <laughs> obviously. Hey folks, at this point in the video, the memory stick in the camera uh, ran out of memory, but I didn't know that and I just kept right on going and uh, did the sort of ending goodbye part of the video <laughs> to a dead camera. Uh, anyway, so I mean that, that's the gist of it um, This is the software I use for those that don't know I use a software called Movavi to edit these things up. So uh, um, Anyway, that's the gist of it. This is the time of year to plant uh, the cold tolerant things the Explanation I gave uh, for the minimum germination temperatures is, is why and tying it to the dandelion I find to be a, a really good way to, uh, to figure that all out uh, I'm gonna do a more direct video talking about that thing uh, very soon, uh, probably this weekend if I can get a nice stretch of weather. Uh, just before this video is over, I wanted to show you something I started doing very recently. Uh, I started putting up articles on Substack, so it's maritimegardening.substack.com. Uh, some of the articles are free, some of the articles are for uh, subscribers only. Uh, it, you know, I put three up already, and uh, these ones are all free for whoever. Why is it, yeah, so it's showing all three. So it's a three-part series on getting started. So it's for the gardener with no garden, and I'm explaining uh, how to go about doing that. And each of the articles has a, a read-along. So if you don't want to read it, or if you're busy or you're doing something, you got your little uh, smartphone going or something like that, you can just click the play button, and uh, you know, and, and check it out that way. So the first part of the series is finding the right spot. The second part of the series is just. Uh, about developing healthy soil and the third part of the series is um, tools finding the, using the right tools and I you know this is one of the things very close to my heart I love uh, I love tools love handheld tools love using my hands I like getting physical and uh, often uh, I think there's a lot of stuff that are sold in garden centers that are just kind of useless so I I use really basic tools and I talk about that uh, in this article so uh, anyway uh, I hope you found that video interesting if you did please like, share, subscribe, sorry, sorry for it ending abruptly, and, and sorry for the helicopter being overhead. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, when you have time to film a video, 
uh, the world's going on around you and it makes a lot of noise sometimes. I really apologize about that. I try to keep that down to a minimum, but uh, anyway, some noise just happens. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. <clears throat> next time, have fun. Get out there, get at it, <laughs> have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.